Welcome back, everybody. Time for us to go behind the headlines. And we're coming to you live from Lindsay Reinhardt's house here in Boise, Idaho. And we'll be speaking with Lindsay in hour two. There's a very special fundraiser they're putting together. And we're going to talk to Lindsay about that in hour two. So stick around. But right now, I wanted to talk about this story that came up in USA Today. You may remember all the way back in 1998, 15 years ago, I think it was the first Winter Olympics that they actually moved to the odd, well, not odd years, but the every other two year thing. I like the Winter Olympics and Summer Olympics used to be in the same year, uh, and now they're split every two years, right? Well, 98 in Nagano, Japan, I think was the first time they had split those Olympics up. And it was also the first time they had a brand new sport in the Winter Olympics, snowboarding. And the first guy to ever win an Olympic gold medal, medal in snowboarding was named Ross Ribagliotti. And there was a controversy because he won the gold medal, and then subsequent drug testing showed he was positive for marijuana, they, they took his gold medal from him, and then he, he appealed and fought that. And since it hadn't actually been under the performance-enhancing drugs statute, he was able to get his gold medal back. But since then, uh, Ross Rabagliotti has been you know, a, a very prominent supporter of marijuana. And next month, he's opening a medical marijuana dispensary in Whistler, British Columbia, the big ski resort up there in Whistler, called Ross's Gold. And also, he's kind of become the public face for pot smoking athletes. You know, whenever somebody gets busted in athletics for smoking pot, you know, all, the media all give Ross a call for, so, to give his you know, opinion on this subject. Well, now he's 42 years old and he believes that the changing attitudes toward marijuana means that we should just remove it from the list of substances on the World Anti-Doping Agency list of banned substances. The World Anti-Doping Agency, also known as WADA, W-A-D-A. And he, he just says, basically, since it's legal for medicinal purposes in Canada and in uh, 19 U.S. states, 18 U.S. states, that there's really no reason, and legal in Washington and Colorado, there's really no reason for it to be on the prohibited substances list. Now, WADA has responded uh, previously, previous to, uh, they actually didn't respond to Rabagliotti, but they've responded to this general uh, call for a change in drug testing due to a couple of the failures in the most recent Olympics in London. Stephanie Lee, uh, America's number one 72 kilogram female wrestler, was disqualified for testing positive uh, at the at the uh, trials in Iowa. Uh, we had her on the show and interviewed her about the situation. Uh, she's a medical user for various reasons. Uh, we also had uh, Nick DiPopolo, who was the judoka, U.S. judoka, judo master for the 73 kilogram weight class, was disqualified. So uh, this after this happened, a lot of people complained that you're testing at such a low level, you're going to catch people who used it weeks or months ago uh, rather than people that are using it in competition. So WADA has actually raised its threshold. And, and remember, they're testing THC coup. They're testing carboxy THC, the metabolites in your urine. And they're raising the, the threshold from 15 nanograms per milliliter to 150 nanograms per milliliter. And when Ribagliotti tested positive at Nagano, he was at 17.8. So had these rules been in effect, we wouldn't have even had to have the controversy about Ross Ribagliotti's gold medal. In 2003, according to the statistics for, uh, for WADA, they say that cannabinoids accounted for almost 14%, something like 13.9% of all adverse analytical findings. That is a failed drug test. Uh, the only things that were more likely to be found than cannabinoids in an athlete's system were anabolic agents such as testosterone and stimulants, right? So uh, actual performance enhancing drugs were more likely to be found than cannabinoids. But in 2011, WADA reported that there were only 7.9% uh, of its violations were for cannabis. So a decrease of almost half uh, in the number of uh, violations that they're finding. And this affects people, you know, athletes all throughout so many different sports. Of course, I told you of Stephanie Lee and Nick DiPopolo. We also had the boxer, Julio Cesar Chavez, who was fined $900,000. UFC, uh, UFC fighter Pat Healy had to surrender $130,000 over positive marijuana tests. And the combat sports agencies don't want this either. It's just ruining athletes' careers for no decent reason. And especially when they should be using cannabis for healing and for pain relief uh, instead of all these other drugs they take. Oh, we gotta take a break. Oh, have you ever met that funny reefer man? A reefer man. Have you 
Yeah, we met that funny reefer man.